Hello, and welcome to That's So Auburn. I'm incredibly excited about today's show, and that's because our guest is a dear friend of mine. She's someone who does more for the Auburn community than just about anyone I can think of. She's as close to Mother Teresa as you'll find in today's day and age, and there's no need to visit a movie theater because she's Auburn's very own superhero. I'm talking, of course, about Debbie Christian, the executive director of the Auburn Food Bank. Debbie's joining me today to talk about the nonprofit and the planned move to a new, much larger space along Auburn Way North near the Auburn Community Resource Center. After spending many years in a cramped 1,200-square-foot building, behind SARS Super Saver. The food bank is what I'm talking about, and it's literally stuffed to the rafters in there and must even deny some food donations, imagine that, because they simply don't have enough room to store product. So this move can't come quick enough. The problem is the renovation costs were priced out before COVID hit, and since then costs have ballooned several hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes, there's commas involved in that. But then just in time for Christmas, an anonymous benefactor came forward with an $800,000 donation. The story is ripped straight out of a Hallmark movie, one of my favorite things to watch this time of year. But it's all true. I promise you that. So stay tuned for my discussion with Debbie alongside City of Auburn Communications Manager Jonathan Glover. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Jonathan. Debbie, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing great. And I'm doing great. Thanks for having us on. Good. All right. I have some questions. Debbie, I'm going to start with you in your own words, and I want you to explain it because I love the way you do it. What is the purpose of the Auburn Food Bank? Well, the Auburn Food Bank has always been uh, here to provide food. Uh, And over the years, we have expanded into solving emergencies. So uh, food is our uh, first and foremost reason for being here, and we try everything we can to continue to have food available for families, whether that be something that they can come get, something we take into the home, or a meal that we create for them. Um, We also have been able to just step in wherever there's an emergency need uh, of any kind. So We do financial assistance as well as food, and a lot of times that's where you'll find a big emergency. Wow, that's a lot. Debbie, I I know I often call you an angel here on earth, but I don't think many people really understand the depth and breadth of the work that you do. And we're recording this the week after Thanksgiving, And it won't go live uh, maybe for a while, but I want to ask, what are you most proud of this year? Mm -hmm. I think think I'm proud that we've been resilient. Uh, We've come out of come through and come out of COVID and we've, we're still standing. Uh, That was really hard on staff and volunteers. We lost a lot of volunteers because of their age and, you know, the pandemic. And then uh, getting new ones in that maybe we're going to be there just a short time and you're constantly, you know, retraining everybody all the time. But um, to be able to still be there, to be able to still provide enough food for families um, has always been, you know, our goal. And so uh, continuing to have that food available is, is a win every day. Mm -hmm. Debbie, would you say this is the most um, busy time for the food bank, the holidays? Coming into the holidays is always very busy because uh, we also then start three new programs every holiday. So starting in September, I'm ordering way more food than I would have ever ordered during the year because we're ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas and we're going to do holiday baskets for families. So then you have to order early and then figure out where you're going to store it during that time, uh, as well as we then partner up with Valley Regional Fire Authority and do toys for kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we do all the registration for that. And so Numbers start picking up, of course, because it's the holiday. They get one extra visit. And then if you have kids, you want to be able to get your kids toys. So there's another reason to be there. So, yes, the, and then the donation stream, you know, typically will pick up during the holidays. So you, you find yourself just very swamped. <laughs> yeah. Debbie, last week at the Thanksgiving food 
uh, event. I was there. I always appreciate that you allowed me to come and and help. What were the numbers last week? So we haven't finished them yet, but we were upwards of uh, 575 families. So um, that's not counting the 200 that we had done in home deliveries for uh, through a DoorDash program we have with United Way. So then, you know, you're trying to look at how many people that's going to serve. And we've been pretty uh, consistent with averaging at four. So if you take that 575 times four, that's how many people you've touched that day with just food for that one day. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing because as I was checking people in, there were very few that had one or two right. as a family number. Yeah. Uh, some of them as high as 11 or 12. Yeah. And it's it's just amazing. They are so appreciative. You know, I I found that to be a majority of the people that that were there that day that we were helping to serve, and uh, just amazing how much work goes into a day like that, and how many volunteers it takes. Yeah. I know I signed in, and there were like two or three different sign-in sheets. How many volunteers do you usually we ha- have? We had seventy that day. 70 volunteers. 70 volunteers, and some of them had never been there before, their first time. So, you know, that's always a quick uh, training process and a quick, you know, we're going to throw you under the bus moment. (laughs) Yeah, it really is. really is. How did you get into this line of work, Debbie? Oh, my goodness. Um, Kicking and screaming. (laughs) Uh, So I, long story, so I'll try to shorten it for you. I had been sitting on the board of the Auburn Food Bank. I had been on it at six years, and the director before me was going to leave. He called me at home and said, uh, I know you're just back on the board for the your next term, but he said, I just wanted to tell you personally that I've decided to resign, and I'd really like to put your name in the hat. And I said, don't bother. No, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. I really like where I'm at, and... I have no intention. And besides that, I don't know what I'd be doing. I don't even know how to run a food bank. You know, I've got all these reasons why I'm no good at this. And um, he said, okay, but would you then sit on the um, search committee? I said, sure, I'd do that. So He's just reeling you in a little (laughs) bit at a time, Debbie. (laughs) That's what it feels like now when I look (laughs) back at it. So sit on that search committee, um, comes down to the last day of needing to have the resumes in, and I get a phone call from the then mayor of Auburn, and he said to me, um, I've been looking through these resumes because he had been asked to pre-look at some stuff, and your name isn't in here. And I said, what are you talking about? You know, I have no intention of doing that. Oh, I really think you ought to try. So I hang up the phone, and I said to my husband what the phone call was about, and he says, well, why don't you? And I said, because. (laughs) (laughs) I, I have no reason to do this. I have no gifting for this. I have no schooling. You know, in my mind, you needed to be a social worker of some sort. Yeah, what did you do before? I was an administrative assistant for my church and okay. took over the financial department before I had left it. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, we're a family of faith. And he said, I, well, I think you ought to think ought to pray about it. And I think you ought to get a resume together. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I've not done a resume my entire life. Mm-hmm. All my jobs I got <laughs> because somebody asked me to come take them. <laughs> so... I'm just like, okay, there better be handwriting on a wall if this is going (laughs) to happen here. So I went ahead and I had to Google up resumes because I had never put one together. Mm -hmm. So I get a resume done, write a cover letter, got it in by their midnight deadline, and um, went through the process of that, got reviewed by the search committee, which then I got removed from, of course. Of course. (laughs) And um, came down to three names, and I sat through my last interview there and left and went back to my office. And the next day in walked Cy Van Silas, who has passed away, but he was well known as being the deputy mayor of Auburn. And he walked through that office and he shut the door behind him. And and I'm looking at him like, what are you doing here? (laughs) Because he'd never been to my church office before. And he said, uh, little girl, that was the worst interview I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) And so I'm thinking this is his way of telling me I don't get this job, which I'm relieved for yeah, sure, <laughs> on course. one hand. And then, you know, apologized to him and um, and thought that would be it. He'd walk out and he said, so you're coming back tonight and uh, I really want you to lead with your heart tonight. 
So I went back to another interview and I walked out of there going, oh, dear God, I think I'm... <laughs> I think you're it. <laughs> I think, oh. think I, got a, I got a change of lifestyle here. So called my kids and told them about it. And my oldest son um, said, Mom, Auburn needs you. Um, I think you had to take that job. So there was my handwriting. <laughs> yes. And I took the job and I've never looked back. I've told everybody uh, when I leave my house, uh, I used to turn left and go to the church office. Now sure. I turn right. Oh, wow. <laughs> How many years ago was that that you started? 17. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It, it doesn't uh, seem like it's no, been that it long. No, it doesn't. I'm sure some days it, it seems like an eternity. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll hear from people who work for the city. Kent Hay, I talk to him often, and he says that you run circles around him. Oh dear! That, and he's like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta work harder just because Debbie is working so hard. So you're definitely inspiration for people all across the city. Yeah. More than once, he's come into my office and said, "The woman doesn't sleep." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. All kinds of all kinds of expectations to live up to. Mm-hmm. But why don't we talk about the move? Mm. Tell us how the move is going. Give us give us a little background. Yeah. So, you know, I've been I've been on the, between with the board and working at the food bank now for twenty three years. So, that entire time um, has been this dream of we were going to move someday. So, you know, I take over the job. I then inherit this need to move. We were we've always been in too small of a spot. Um, it's been wonderful where we're at, but it just keeps shrinking. You know, King County Housing Authority owns it. They need more space, we lose space. They need more parking spots, we lose parking spots. So, you know, and, and really no fault to them. It's just we all have needs, right? right. So They've been pretty gracious landlords. They have been very good landlords. So then I talked to Linda Cowan, who has been in Auburn forever, and I said something about 23 years, and she says, oh, no, we were doing this 40 years ago, dreaming someday – you know, the food bank would get a bigger space and be able to move. So, wow. you, you know, you come up to the point of you got to do something. So in me <laughs> looking around Auburn and, I mean, I drove every street trying to find an empty warehouse or an empty something that we could move into and could afford and kept looking at the old sports page here. It sat empty for over five years mm-hmm. and, you know, and it seemed like a good corner and you were next to DSHS and Valley Cities and, you know, I'd go look in the window and I'd say, oh, come on, God, can't we get this building? And then I came down here to you and uh, then the city planner. And at that point, uh, you guys started making some contact with the ownership and they bought into our idea of a one stop and, you know, letting the food bank be there. And uh, things snowballed a little bit right then. Right then. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, was really exciting. And so... January of 2020, I got the keys from you guys as a subleaser, and March of 2020, COVID hit, and here we sat. Right. Wow. Next three years, we're paying rent for a building I can't even get into. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, so the dream... The dream feels like it's finished, right? I got a building. I know where I'm going to go. It feels like we're going to get there, and then we don't get to get there. And uh, so... Luckily, you know, COVID lifts and we get a contractor in and, um, you know, our initial prices were kind of sitting at uh, 1.3 and I thought, well, we could probably do that. We knew going in, we didn't have all the money we needed. Um, We had a lot of it, um, but we also knew that we were coming into a holiday period and holidays have always been really wealthy for us, if that's the Mm -hmm. right way to say that, Um, and uh, really felt like we could work on getting grants, um, and get in and then, uh, probably a bank loan, but, uh, we're a subleaser and then we're not, you know, so that means we're not owning anything. So we have no asset in the building. Um, so grantors really didn't want to do remodels. They wanted to do big capital projects where sure. you're going to own stuff. And, um, and then the bank, uh, had changed hands a couple of times as far as management. And so, you know, they don't know us. They don't know how to trust us. They don't, un- they don't understand believing in <laughs> what I know could happen. <laughs> and um, so the bank loan was really, really iffy. And so we come to a point where we don't have enough money to uh, pay our bill any longer. Um, the construction was at about 90% complete at that point. And so it needed to be stopped, obviously. 
and um, and then we just needed to go out and try to hunt down money again. Mm-hmm. And so, coming out of COVID, even you know, COVID dollars were pretty high for almost all nonprofits. Got some really good money during COVID, but um, you also had more programs that you had to do and more people you had to serve. And so, and we were having to buy more groceries versus getting donations in. So, you know, some of that money went away to bills like that. And, um, and then because I'm paying rent on a place I can't use, I'm also playing, paying rent on like five more warehouse spaces because I don't have any place to go. And I've got to, I got to keep up. Here's a donation of all your furniture. Well, you don't want to turn that down. No, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, that's $5,000 in office space. Mm-hmm. So I take in furniture. Then I've got to go rent a, rent a warehouse. So, you know, that balance of money just kind of kept happening all the time. We laid off staff in order to try to save some money. We cut back on financial aid in order to try to save. And then here we sit. And so finally, you know, have to make the decision to stop where we're at and, um, Unfortunately, we still had bills to pay, mm-hmm. had to pay the contractor and the vendors. And, you know, and I know it got tough for them at some points. And so I'm sick over all of that, but you are where you are. And the money dried up after COVID just completely felt like it. You know, the, uh, the our, our event monies were down. Our donation stream was down. Um, you're not getting the same kinds of grants you were. A lot of grantors now are trying to go for... Uh, nonprofits that are partnering up with three or four agencies. Mm-hmm. Well, I can for a program, but I can't for this, right? right? So this is a one <laughs> one little spot project right here to get capital, into a building. And capital isn't always available. Right. Capital was not available. So um, here we sat with a beautiful building that's absolutely going to be, you know, earth-shaking for us, and yet we don't have enough money to finish out the build. So uh, about the building, what are you most excited about? I know the space, obviously, yeah. for for everybody to move around so and for the food, but, but crazy what, what else enough, is new there? I'm really excited about a garage door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so where we are now, you bring, you bring the pallet jack up to the door, mm-hmm. you unload the pallet to another pallet inside the door, and then you move it a little ways, and you have to unload it again through another door Wow. to get it to the freezer to unload again to get in the freezer. So now you've just... Not even talking about how many times you've touched Sounds it before so the efficient. driver yeah. got it. Since the driver brought it on the property, we've now touched it five times. Wow. So I'm getting a huge garage door where the truck can just pull up and stop, take off that pallet, drive it straight over to a large double door freezer and, ref- and walk-in refrigerator, mm-hmm. and they'll just roll that pallet right in. So we will not touch it from the time that driver gets <laughs> off the truck till he stops it inside the That's building. That's got to be nice. It's the so, little things like that that make a huge difference. Exactly. You don't even think about it until you're, you're in it. Right. That's Those wild. two pieces alone – are going to save just so much time. So yeah, much time so much and time. the opportunity to be doing something more meaningful yeah. <laughs> instead of Keep going. almost, it almost feels like the kid who gets in trouble and has to move the log pile, the wood pile <laughs> yeah. from one side of the yard and then has to move it back to the other side <laughs> of the yard again uh, to be taught a lesson. <laughs> I know there have been a lot of lessons <laughs> in all of this, but yeah. at the, at the uh, harvest food bank breakfast mm-hmm. recently, you talked about the shortage of yeah. $800,000. Yeah. And I, I think there were some people in the room that maybe hadn't been aware of that shortage. And I looked around and I could see some shock and awe mm-hmm. on faces. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a big number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you never lost faith. So since the food bank breakfast, I know there's been a lot of exciting news and I, I mentioned it in the preview here, but tell us how that all transpired, Debbie. Well, you know, lots of prayer goes into stuff like that. And uh, and we started begging, uh, which... You're a horrible beggar. <laughs> <laughs> That's what somebody told me. Uh, so you start begging, you start doing things on Facebook, and you start, you know, figuring out how you can get the word out better. And, uh, you know, and you got to... Explaining yourself all the time is the really hardest part of why you have to have it and what brought it up to why you have to have that much and what you didn't, you know, what did you do wrong, Debbie, that, you know, caused this problem. And I get a phone call uh, from a, well, actually, I think I started off with a text. I got a text message from a gal. And so obviously I do know her. 
And uh, she started asking questions about how much money was it that did you need and what's it for? And had several questions back and forth that kind of related to that. And then the next day, she called on the phone and said, I just want my boss to talk to you. And some of that same questions again, you know, how'd you get here? Uh, but he kept coming back to, if you had the $800,000, would it solve your problem? So could you stop begging? <laughs> and, and can you walk in the door? And I said, well, I can stop begging, <laughs> but I can't walk in the door yet. There's still a few things that have to be finished. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, all the outside stuff, the permitter that has to come in and check all that stuff out for you. So probably a couple of months down the road that I could walk through the door and he said, but would 800,000 solve the bill? And there's no more money that you need after that 800,000. And I said, you know, after thinking about it, I said, well, yes. And he said, okay, I think I can help you. Mm. And, uh, and even at that moment, I think my thought was a couple hundred thousand dollars. You know, hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's help, and that's very generous help. Right. 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 So, never once did it cross my mind that he meant all of it. Wow. And I didn't even know he meant all of it until we hung up the phone, and she got back on the text message with me, and said, um, "Where can I meet you uh, to give you this check?" Oh. And. <laughs> Uh, she then said, I can't, you know, I can't do it tonight. I can't do it tomorrow night. Um, and I said, could you just tell me how much? <laughs> Cause I'm thinking, okay, then I need to know my next begging will be sure. <laughs> 400,000. <000. laughs> and, uh, she said, it'll be all of it. Oh. And, you know, you don't have any words for that. Right. You know, you, you lose your breath, your chest contracts, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't break down in tears at that point. I oh, just am like... I would have been in tears. Yeah. I was sitting in the office by myself, so nobody was going to see me cry. <laughs> I would have been ugly crying, so... But I, uh, I I, went home and I, you know, said to my husband, I, I think I just got this paid, you know? So I don't talk about it. I don't tell anybody about it. I, the next day I um, sent a text out to my board members and I said... Uh, could we all get on a Zoom call at three o'clock today? I knew at that moment that they that I'm doing an unexpected Zoom call days before a board meeting. That probably scared them. Right. You that. think? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't tell them. Can we get on a Zoom call? So we get on a Zoom call, and I said, um, I I got I got to ask a couple of favors. First of all. Um, if, if a donor comes forward, they want to remain anonymous and they don't want anybody to say their name. And I, I am not telling you, so don't even bother asking me, but we need to stop begging. And that means that if there's more money that happens to come up after this $800,000, that we just figure out another way to get it without coming back on, um, on Facebook and stuff. And one of the things um, they had kind of said is, you know, it's they didn't they just didn't like to see the food bank have to do that, mm -hmm. you know. you. People are really gracious, and they all think that everybody should just up up and give out their dollars for the food bank. But there's a lot of giving out there already, you know, so people have places to take their money. But um, so after I told them that I really did have $800,000 and I was picking up the check tonight, you know, it, that was really funny because some of them were on mute and some of them were not. And, <laughs> and so then the shock of everybody's face and then – uh, so funny because Did you do a screenshot so you can <laughs> not at that point. Oh. And it, uh, my um, one of my board members had come in late, and uh, so we had to, and she was on mute, so we had to tell her what it was. And you could see her throw up her arms and do this little cheer. You know, she was so excited wow. for us, and so that was really fun to do. When I got the check that night, then I did take a screenshot and send it back out to the board. Um, but telling the staff was really fun uh, because they've been really nervous. You know, they already knew I'd laid off a couple of people and we were cutting back and um, telling them constantly, no, we can't buy that. We can't do any more, you know? And so, you know how that feels. It really does make you wonder, am I going to keep my job tomorrow? Sure. You know? So I'd asked them all to come to a staff meeting and bring their phones with them. And as they were sitting around the room, I, I, 
I wanted to make sure I could see that they all had their phone because they all looked at me like I was nuts. And so I said, I'm going to send you a text. I want you to all read it at the same time. So I sent him a text to this check, um, just the part where it said Auburn Food Bank, $800,000. And uh, their reaction was just golden for me. It made my day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that was really exciting to be able to do and to share and to say, you know, there really is light at the end of this tunnel that we've been dreaming about for way too long. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Gives me goosebumps. Oh, we are, I mean, we are just beyond. <laughs> Timmy has been driving for us for over 20 years, and he said, uh, I never, ever thought it would be I'm a, real. You know, I just listened. I just think, okay, Debbie, let me pat you on the head and send you on home. <laughs> and, and here we are. We're really going to walk into this building, and that's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Are we doing a ribbon cutting? Oh, yes, done? we are. Yes, we're going to have an open house. I hope I hope to do a lot of fun things that way. And uh, uh, already got people working on designs for a flyer and whatever. Yeah, you and said, so you said a few months probably before? So, yeah. So, of course, see, here we are again. We're right at the holidays. Right. So um, they're at the – I have to have compressors put on this roof. Mm-hmm. And the compressors are for my um, – walk-in f- cooler and freezer, so those have to be hooked up. They're ha- doing that now. Um, there is some work to do on an Ansel system in my kitchen. Um, we kept the hood from the old place, and so it's really, really dirty. Mm-hmm. And But I've got people working on that, getting it cleaned up, and then um, there's a small repair on that that has to happen, and then the Ansel system hooked up. And then... Um, a little bit of kitchen work, uh, a few more pieces that I still need that I don't think I have to have to open, but then we come right up into Christmas. So, um, you know, people are going to want to take their time off for Christmas. And so right. then then the walkthrough with the contractor has to happen to do that punch list to see that everything is, you know, we're all agreeing that everything's what we want it to be and finished. And then the, you know, the uh, inspector that has to come through and put their... John Henry on it to tell me that I can actually get occupancy for it, and we're on our way. Yes, there's just a few short things. Yeah. yeah that's that's really Relatively good. speaking, it's a few <laughs> short well, things. Right. In terms of the whole timeline, the, the, right. the 20 plus years of moving, yeah. you're almost there. Yep. Yeah. Almost. Well, yeah. super exciting. Yeah. I'm, I am so thankful for our community. I'm so thankful for that angel donor. Yep. Uh, who shall remain nameless. Mm-hmm. But those 20 some years ago when you were when you were um, doing your second interview for this job, if you weren't, if if Cy Van Silas hadn't <laughs> told you to come in and next time do the interview with your heart, what what would be your dream job? Where? What would you be doing now, Debbie Christian, if you were not the amazing executive <laughs> director of the Auburn Food Bank? You know, I'd be right where I had been. I loved working for my church. I loved being the administrative assistant. I was, you know, second to my pastors, my pastoral staff. Um, that had been my goal from a little girl, which mm. seems crazy. I get it, but... Um, as a little girl, my dad's a pastor, and he had to do everything himself. And, uh, you know, I saw him hand write out his sermon, and, you know, it was never typed. And so that was always hard, and cleaning the church and all of that, you know. And so I just, at some point in life, I thought, I am going to be a church secretary, and I'm going to be the best one there's ever been <laughs> in my head. I'm dreaming all this. <laughs> and uh, and I I was at college, and I worked for the administ- uh the development administrator at my college, and I loved working for him, and I loved being able to give back in any way I could find, you know, in that work, and then get a job at a church in Bremerton, and then got a job here in Auburn, and I'd been at that same church then for several, many, many years, actually, and um, coming in as a part-time secretary, and then moved my way up. I'm the office manager. I'm the administrative assistant. Um, to several of the pastors and, and that's, and I loved that job. I loved, I loved helping them. I loved helping taking the stress off of their life so that they could go do the things they needed to do and helping people. And, um, I loved, uh, helping the people that came through the front door and needed it. And a lot of times it's so interesting to look back at because a lot of times the people who came in the front door were 
people who are coming in the front door here at the food bank that, you know, needed financial help or they needed food help or, you know, even, even just a referral help, you know, they needed counseling for their family. And so, um, I've just always had a knack for, um, remembering where all those pieces are and then trying to put them together for people. And, um, you know, my, it's crazy, but, uh, one of the, one of my most rewarding things to ever do is be the, uh, to be the, um, facilitator at a funeral. I did a lot of wedding coordinating and, uh, stuff like that, but, um, to be that facilitator at a funeral, I felt like I was that person in the middle that was between the grieving family and the business over here. And, you know, you need somebody in the middle to kind of bring that together. And that I did that a lot and mm -hmm. found a lot of good will in that. And You have so. always been able to bring people together, whether it's Six to eight hundred people in the morning for the harvest breakfast at O oh, Dark Thirty, <laughs> or coming together to put together the backpacks for the mm. weekend for kids uh, who may not otherwise have food in their houses for the weekend. You've just always had that gift, and I so appreciate you coming in and chatting with us today. And it's always a pleasure, uh, but. Before we leave, is there anything else you want to say to our listeners? I think a thank you. You know, um, everybody tried. Everybody tried to help. Um, that $5 gift was just as important to me as that $800,000 gift has been. I made up my mind early on that um, kind of as I was opening up envelopes and I was, you know, would I get excited about this one? Would this one be a big one? You know? And then I thought, I can't live like that. I'm going to be excited about every dollar that comes across this desk. And, um, it was interesting of, because $5 came in and, you know, $1,500 came in and, um, you'd see a lot of all kinds of dollar value. And, then it was interesting to see what came in from California and New York and Wisconsin. Wow. <laughs> because somebody shared a story mm -hmm. and somebody heard a radio station or something, you know, and, and believed in my spiel, I guess. <laughs> but um, to a person, everybody tried. Everybody tried to help us. And um, I can't thank Auburn people enough for trying hard with us Do and you know, believing in us. One of the things that I've always said about Auburn is we may not be the richest city right. if you value that only by income. Mm -hmm. But I would put Auburn up against any city yep. if you value the riches by the willingness to give and come together to yep. serve. Yep. And so thank you so much, Debbie, for being with us today. And I can't wait to help cut the ribbon <laughs> at the grand opening of the I food I might bank. make you help move. You got to oh, pick I'll up do that too. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, yeah, I'll do that work, too. Yeah. <laughs> See if she's got any muscle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, she, if she was there on Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. She must have, right? Oh, no. Those I put her in a computer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Puts me up front. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah, thank so. you. Thank you so much, Debbie. And thank you, mm -hmm. Mayor, for having us on. Thank you.